Stella. Hi, Maria. I'm really delighted to have this conversation with you, even though we've never met before, but just from the brief chat that we've had already, I think this is going to be a lovely conversation. So thank you so much for, for giving me your time to have this um, conversation, which hopefully will help other people who want to get their writing work out into the world, um, just to see what it's like for people who have done it already. So sure. um, if you could say just a bit about who you are in the world and um, something about your writing, that would be lovely, thank you. Thank you for having me, I'm happy to be here. I actually had to get up and get dressed and have a shower and wash my hair and put some lipstick on, <laughs> which I haven't been doing in a while. Um, so yeah, my name's Stella Reed, um, AKA Nanny Stella. Um, what's the Nanny Stella about? So the Nanny Stella is about, I was on a crazy TV show called Nanny 911 some years ago. Um, I'm originally from Burnley in Lancashire. Um, I live here in Los Angeles, California with my husband and my son. Um, and my mother, who lives in a little guest house at the bottom of the yard called Wits End. She lives there like a little gnome, but we won't tell <laughs> her that. Um, so, um, I, I, as I say, I was on the TV show Nanny 911. Um, I'd been a, a nanny in Los Angeles for about 10 years. Long story short, got headhunted for this TV show. And um, that segues into um, the, the writing part of life, how I became... Um, an author and I'm, I'm very happy to chat to you about this because I actually kind of feel like an imposter to be perfectly honest because you know people say oh you know two three times author whatever it is and I'm like oh author is that really me so I've, I've never really worn the badge very well so um, I'm very happy to chat about that in case anybody out there is feeling that I would love us to chat about that because I think so many people watching would that would really resonate so, and I know what you mean because it was really funny because I never called myself a writer until after I'd published two books. And like right. the first book was published seven years ago and the second was only this year. And it's only then when I set up my author page that I suddenly thought, yeah, I'm a writer. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I, I think I have to um, have a conversation with myself about that because um, I'm sort of, um, I'm, I'm being a bit combative with myself because there's a couple of books that are still here, mm -hmm. um, that I've been in resistance um, to write. I've said, you know, um, that I'm not going to do them, but you know, you know, never say never. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel that's what sort of defines my story as far as being mm -hmm. an author, being, being very much in resistance to it, to be honest. Oh, lovely. Yeah, we definitely explore that if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, so can we start then with, like, if you're so resistant as an author, how did you actually get started writing? So, um, it, it actually came about, it, I, I manifested it. So this is like a contradiction in terms, to be honest. <laughs> when, when we were on the show, Nanny 911, um, myself and Nanny Deb, Deb Carroll, who are very good friends, we were chatting and I'm like, we, you know, we both said we need to get a book out there. And you've got to be careful what you put out there because <laughs> um, we, we went for lunch with the producers and I'd actually can only describe it as a, p, as a paper mache piece of paper. What would be sort of class now as your vision board in a way, uh -huh. way before people were talking about vision boards. And it was a piece of paper that I'd... Um, you know, crafted, scrapbooked, however you want to, you know, describe it. And it was an A4 piece of paper with Nanny 911 on it and a book. And, and I literally presented that with Deb, that lunch, and said, we want to write a book. And in no time at all, that, that actually happened. It, it manifested. Um, the imposter part of this is I, I, I can write and I do write. But with that book and the subsequent book, which we'll get into, um, well, actually three, to be honest, um, there were I there were collaborations so the first book was with Deborah Carroll um Nanny Deb that was um Nanny 911 expert advice for all your parenting emergencies um but we had a ghostwriter so that came about in the fact that we um we we basically sat down for a whole weekend with with the ghostwriter that we approved and we just told stories lots and lots and lots of stories and then she went away 
and she digested all that information and came back and then she had a lot of questions and it was you know it was tweaked and molded and tweaked and molded um the 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 big thing about that book was that book was um basically written and out there um it was basically written in six weeks which wow. was no which was no time at all yeah um so that that was that one that was done through uh harper collins which was it still is a, a massive publishing house um um as far as you know how did that come about it came through the show it was all done through um fox and granada granada being a uk, a UK production company fox mm -hmm. being you know a, a very big tv show a uh, tv uh, um i can't get my words out you know a, a production <laughs> um station whatever you want to call it and um that that was a it was a very interesting experience because it was fast and furious um i was still working my job at the time as a nanny i was on the show i was married with stepchildren um it was chaos um and if i'm really sort of brutally honest i didn't enjoy that process mm -hmm. it, it, you know I, I enjoyed the end results i mean yeah you know i'm i'm an author um mm -hmm. that was that one then the second one um, that came in 2005 and we were on the show in, in, you know, the show aired in November of October, November of 2004. And that book was published in the April of 2005. Then um, quite a few years went by, 10, in fact, actually. And I didn't realize the, um, the correlation of the months. But uh, the Nanny Chronicles of Hollywood, which I wrote in collaboration with Jules Swales, who's the delightful human being that introduced us. Yeah. Um, a, a similar experience, but you know, Jules and I had a lot of stories, you know, in the industry, and then we uh, collaborated with a company who um, ghost, you know, helped ghost write the book, but also helped us get the book out into the world, and that was a self-published book um mm -hmm. very different experience i actually as as um as hard as it got sometimes it it felt you know jules and i have pretty much a type personalities so we had a lot more control than i had you know 10 years before um and that was we did that through create space you know we created our yeah, own yeah. little um our own little publishing um uh company called paisley productions and we did that book. Um, and then another book is called um, The Nanny in Charge, which um, I partnered with two other ladies in the industry, Marta Perone and Kathleen Sullivan. And interestingly enough, I'm actually, um, I don't know if you would say republishing, but I'm rebranding that book because I'm taking right. it to use um, in a program, in a, in a nanny program. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've digressed and gone off at a tangent. No, it's okay. But it, but but as far as my you know my writing process um i was paid to write articles on parenting um and if you ask me how i go about that or have gone about that i leave everything till the last minute like i have it in my head i'll have it in my head and i'll put something down on paper and then i'll come back to it kind of like some of those sensitive emails that i have to write in my life and my business i won't do it straight away um but people tell me that I write how I speak. You can mm -hmm. hear my voice. You can hear my voice um, when you read uh, my content. Um, to, to go back to what we were just saying, though, about uh, the original book, and I, I hope I don't get in trouble for, for this by anybody out there, but the ghostwriting experience for me was quite difficult in the fact that, and I know my friend Deb felt the same way, we had a ghostwriter and she went off and, you know, she started writing stuff. And when it came back, it wasn't our voice. Mm. It wasn't. So we had to, that was the biggest challenge. If anybody is going to work with a ghostwriter, yeah. that was the biggest challenge of making sure, you know, your voice was projected in, mm. in that, in that, um, you know, testament basically. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. So, so the first book was written by a ghostwriter. The second book you collaborated with Jules. Did you say that was ghostwritten as well? Sort of, but it was more of a collaboration with a company that helped you get your book out into the world. So right. they were like, um, 
we didn't have an agent per se, but they were like, um, you know, there was a team of them. There was a collaboration of people um, that helped us um, get it out there. Right. So they helped you to get it out there. Did they also help you to write it then? Yeah, they um, um, they they took it and um, did the same sort of thing, but not not to the same. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Extent. Not to the same extreme. Ex yes, extent. Yeah. yeah, we had a much we had a much bigger say um, in in that process than we did than I did the first time around. Yeah. So, so the books that you've still got in your mind are these collaborative books again? Are you going to write them yourself, or are you going to get somebody else to to do that? Picture? No, they're not. They're not collaborative at all. They're 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 me. And as yeah. I say, I'm in I'm in resistance. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I would definitely get people in, involved as far as editing and you know, yeah. you know, giving me feedback. Um, but there wouldn't be. Um, it would be. It would be completely from me and I think that's that's the bigger draw of okay Stella you're in resistance to this but now you know have a bigger conversation with yourself about you know why you're not doing it but that would be that would be the draw the draw mm -hmm. of that would be to say uh, very selfishly this is mine and mine alone mm. you know all yeah. mine like you know the success the failure um mine alone. Yeah. brilliant yeah no I really get that I think that's interesting because lo lots of people ha have ideas of, of um, getting a book out there. They think that they have to write it themselves, don't they? And I, don't, I don't think people very, you know, it's not, I, I don't know how many people would think, oh, ghostwriting is, a, is an option, you know, getting somebody else to write the, the book for you. I mean, it's still your story. And I think Absolutely. about making sure it's your voice is going to be a really important factor in that. But how did you go about? Or did you have to go about finding a ghostwriter? Yes, um, it, when it was when it was you know two thousand and five, we were offered people um, through the network and mm -hmm. through Harper Collins. And um, my memory is actually a bit sketchy on that, but I don't remember how many people were submitted, or maybe we were just offered the one lady. Mm -hmm. um, um, and how terrible is it? I'm sitting here and I can't remember her name. Um, Quite a few years but, ago. Now. <laughs> yeah, and and I've had a child since then, and I've lost a lot of brain cells. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think the to stick with that a little bit, the 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 ghostwriting piece. I think that comes in in different shapes and forms. For example, in business now, people have virtual assistants or personal assistants or executive assistants that can be whatever you want it to be it doesn't have to be a it doesn't have to be boxed in that you're going to collaborate with somebody and they're going to ghost write your book for you that i think there's a, a stigma attached to that maybe for writers that's that's why i'm saying to you about the imposter syndrome for me like yeah i don't have, I, I don't have to shout from the rooftops that i'm a writer and i'm i'm an author because that mm. isn't the thing that uh make you know sets me alive it's not it's not my passion yeah. um, but it's it's definitely something you know worming its way out of me um, <laughs> but, but i don't think people have to be nervous or embarrassed or um, ashamed like if mm. get your get yourself out there however yeah. however you get yourself out there get yourself out there yeah. um one of the quick tips that um, I just want to throw out before I forget is for anybody that is thinking of, of writing anything, because um, when you think of when you think of a book, that's that's a big picture, isn't it? It's a big yeah. undertaking if you yeah. make it a big undertaking. I think my tip there would be, which um, I learned from a, a, a fabulous guy called Steve Chandler, who's oh, I know um, Steve, yeah, yeah. Um, is do 10 it's like anything do 10 minutes a day you know sit down and do 10 minutes a day just write yes. just write and yeah. then if you need to have somebody um I know you were saying your your sister's involved in your process process with this podcast mm. um or interviews um you know have somebody that you can send that to that just types it up you know there yeah. doesn't have to be any editing involved if you're if you're somebody who loves the tactile part of writing and feeling and you know you're one who sits down and writes as opposed to sitting and typing 
um, either way, you know, you can send it to somebody else, you know, after, after 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, you'd be amazed at how much content you actually have. Yes. Yeah. I think the key thing that you're saying, Stella, is about um, if you've got a message or a story that you want to get out there, just sitting down and writing the book yourself is not the only option. No, not at and, all. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. I mean, if, you, if you're really passionate, like you said, about getting a message out there or a story you've got to tell or just something that you want to actually get out of yourself, no, there's, don't be held back by that at all. Mm. I mean, because for me, there'd be no books out in the world right now <laughs> if, I hadn't, if I hadn't have collaborated with people. Yeah. So, so when you, so do, do you write, you said you write articles. So is writing part of your daily or weekly, um, you know, kind of routine? Or is it, 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 used, it, it used to be. Right. Yeah, it, it used to be. And to, um, you know, to be uh, very, very transparent, it's going to be again, because um, I'm going to start journaling, which I haven't done in, you know, many, many, many years. Um, I've, I do a morning practice at the moment where I um, I just do thing, five things that I'm grateful for. Um, that's that's my writing at the moment, which yeah. is quite interesting, which is quite interesting, really, because one day I sat and just simply said that I was um, I was thankful. I was thankful for um, English, you know, English tea. I'm drinking English tea right now. <laughs> yeah. And on the same day, I, I wrote about how I was thankful for English tea. And I was also thankful for my washing machine and dryer. You know, just simple things. <laughs> and that day, that day after I'd written that, I went to make a cup of tea and my milk was sour. And I went to use my washer and dryer and my washer was broke. So again, <laughs> you know, there's, <laughs> there's messages out there. <laughs> um, hmm. So I'm really, what you've just said about, you know, where you are in your writing process right now and that you've definitely got, you've definitely got some other books. Like, I really would like to interview you again. Sure. Um, so, so one of the things that, one of the ideas that I have is, is, is actually talking to people who are at the beginning of a writing process, kind of a, a midpoint of a writing process. And then when they've got, hopefully they'll have their book out there and then just put the three parts together at some point I think that's going to be really interesting to see the the edits from here here and here um, well, in, in the writing journey so do you um, do you want to do you want to have a, a, a sneak peek at what is in my brain oh that'd be brilliant <laughs> so, so, so there's two but um the one that's um unwritten and excuse the language but, but there is a play on words is um the one that I think really needs to be written is from nannyhood to motherhood and all the shit in between. Oh, that sounds good. So, um, I, you know, obviously I've been a nanny working with parents in, in some capacity for over 30 years, but um, I didn't have my son till late in life. I mm. actually had him, um, I had him the day before I was 47. Oh, damn, yes. So there's a big story. You know, yeah. like the, there's also the story now that I joke that I've had to go back to people and apologize like on a 12 step <laughs> program for, for all the things that I held them to the fight, the flame over that I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I've got a I've got a nine year old. We call him the smiling assassin. Like he's, he's fabulous, but he's thinking of what he's that, you know, like um, Dennis the Menace. Oh, but, God. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd love to 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 talk to you um, yeah. further. But any any questions that you have right now that you feel might be beneficial to your, you know, to your listeners? Yeah, no, that's what I was just thinking. Is like you like you haven't started this new book yet, but and you have this idea about being an imposter, but you know, it seems to me like you know that you're going to write this book. So. Like, how does that work for you? Like, how does it work that, you know, you've got this idea of being an imposter, yeah. but you know that you're going to write the book? 
Well, I'm still in resistance to it, to be honest, Maria. I really am. Like, it wasn't until sitting down. I, I, I don't think I would. I didn't even plan to confess that I still have these. <laughs> it just, you know, it's what happens. Um, I'm actually, um, I don't know how people, you know, I don't know their process. I don't know where they are in their process. One thing that I'm doing that is um, I've never done before, um, I'm actually having 24 hours away by myself in a hotel um in the next few weeks to mm -hmm. get very to get very quiet yeah. and figure and figure out the next steps for kind of everything yeah. so um what i call sort of brain dumping which i do with my little i have a little team who work with me an amazing team in my business yeah. um but i'm just going to get it all out you know probably have a hotel room plastered with you know big sheets of paper and you know post it notes yeah um so uh, I, I don't know what it looks like, but if, if I was if I was to project what it might possibly look like, it would be to actually um, to actually sort of put what the chapters might be. I mean, I'm already, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm in this resistance and this in, in this avoidance, but I've already got <laughs> chapters. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. works though, isn't it? Because like you can have all the resistance, but there's something that just keeps keeps you moving on it, isn't there? Yeah. Um, the other thing that I would say as well is I've been invited. Uh, collaboration is a big part of, as we know, has been a big part of my my writing career. I mean, I'm going to start owning this um, again to, to people out there that haven't done anything yet or, you know, they don't know what the next steps are. I've been invited a couple of times to be part of um, collaborative books um, where you each get a chapter you know mm -hmm. maybe maybe somebody out there who's not ready to write their whole book um could be, could do that as well yeah. or they could say to themselves hey i'm not ready to write the whole book but why don't i decide to approach other people to participate you know in yeah. my book it's um, funny you should say that because i'm just working with myself and a group of other authors actually from jules swales is um, summer writing class. There's six right. of us who are collaborating on a book, which I'm going to publish because I, I don't know if you know, but I've just set up a new um, company to help people self-publish their books. I and, did not, but that's fabulous to yeah, know. It's so exciting. Um, and the first book that I'm going to publish is this book with six authors, um, five of whom I'm the only one of the six that has actually published anything before. And, and the other one's definitely on her way to, she's, she's well way through a, um, a really great book. In fact, I interviewed her a, a couple of weeks ago, Jacqueline Hollows. She's nearly finished and almost ready to publish her book. But the other four haven't really published and are very, very, were very, very reluctant to put their work out there. And Jacqueline came up with the idea for the for the group to say, look, wouldn't it be great to just you know get some of our pieces and put them all together? And um, actually, this morning I sat and read the whole thing. Um, it's only a short book, cover to cover, and the pieces in it are just amazing. It's going to be such, such a nice book, and that's exactly what you were just saying about you know some people coming together so they don't have to do the whole thing. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, the thing is to to dig a little deeper, maybe not myself, because I've already put myself on the chopping block today. <laughs> and it's like, you know, what's holding people back? You know, if yeah. you've got, ex you know, you if, if you really this is this is what I would say about myself. And this is um, sh shameless self-promotion. Shameless. I am. I'm, I am not embarrassed by this whatsoever. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it, it, I don't necessarily have to say how I'm going to do it or what it's going to look like. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm going to do it. So I at that that lunch, you know, 15 years ago, I put out to the world that there was going to be a book with my name on it, and yeah. and technically now now there are three. So yeah, just you know, I just hope people can get out of their own way. And yeah, and the other thing is, I'm not a perfectionist. I'm not. But if I could go back and um have more time 15 years ago there were things i would do differently you know yeah, it was yeah. a very fast fast moving train but my thing is just um you know um nike says just do it 
right? Just do it. I yeah. say just stop. Just start. Yeah. Just start. You know, yeah. if you haven't, if you're like, oh yeah, I want to be an, an author, I want to be a writer, I'll just you know, put pen to paper or you know, fingers to computer, and you know, um, collab yeah. collaborate with people like yourself. Um, I mean, I think it's fantastic that you're going to do a collaborative book with people yeah. who've never, you know, never, never done it. Yeah, it's going to be so good. So, can I just ask you then? So, you've you've done these three books, collaborated ghost writing. What what did you learn from that? What you've gone through in the past that you think is going to help you going forward <laughs> well the first thing is and no disrespect to the people I collaborated with because they're phenomenal they're amazing humans and smarter than me and better writers than me um I mean look Jewel Swales to me is a, a <clears throat> she's an icon you know I yeah. mean I, I adore I adore her um the, the thing for me that would that, that would make me believe that I'm not an imposter um, as far as being a writer would be to do it by myself. I don't mean purely by myself, but pa but put my word, my words out there and my my message. Yeah. Now I'm I scaring think... myself to death that I can't <laughs> get away from this. <laughs> but I think the point that you're making is a really good point, because I think people think that writing the book is a solely solitary business and, yeah. it, and it it's best if it's not isn't it it's like yeah. you 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 write and we know that when you the first thing that you write is not what you're going to publish uh, and that it's going to need some editing and you need other people's eyes on it for a start um to be able Re to sorry to interrupt you really great yeah. point and, and and my extension my piggyback off that though is go to people this is it's sort of a contradiction in terms but like go to people that you trust with your dream right yeah. the, there's a thing out there i saw it floating floating around the internet about um don't go to somebody with your million dollar dream that's gonna lose sense you know like you 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 go to somebody to put their two cents in oh, it's yeah. like go go to the people that you want to share your vulnerability with that this is something you want to do and create that team around you um mm -hmm. you know people like yourself maria um like the people you're working with or somebody else that has a friend that you know that they trust is going to give them um you know positive feedback you know be critique them but not um criticize them yes. and you know and like I suppose like sort of um mentors doesn't have to be a writing mentor but because the 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 thing about writing a book is it's actually the business of writing a book mm. it's very it's very romantic isn't it to yeah it's it is it's really romantic to say oh my gosh i want to get my words on paper <laughs> yeah well that's and great then, when you get start, then you realize it's a business <laughs> Yes, the business of writing. There's there's your book. There's your next book. The business, you know, the business of writing a book. But yeah, you know, surround yourself with people um, that are going to be supportive in your in your pursuits. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the other thing is, it's it. What I find really interesting right now in our in our current world is also publishing books doesn't have to even be about writing either does it it, it yeah. has it's about being creative i mean yeah i've had the, i've had this idea here we go again stella i've had this <laughs> idea for for a table book you know for a, a coffee table book yeah um all there has to be in that is you know inspirational words and beautiful pictures mm. you know i think i'm going to really confuse your audience here maria <laughs> i'm all over the place I don't I don't think so at all I think you, it seems to me like you're making perfect sense and I, I love what you're saying because I think people listening will like it will really resonate with them that they you know the feeling like an imposter the feeling like it's hard and you know not realizing that you can um you know there's a, I think one of the things when people start writing is that they find out that there's so much more to it than they 
than they thought. But that doesn't need to scare them, does it? Because if yeah. they start to, like you say about collaborating with people who are helpful and supportive, and there is loads of help and support out there, and I'd love it if people come and come to me and I'll help and support people to get their books out there. Um, but that's it. It's a collaborative experience, not a solitary one. Yeah, you. It, it's that. It's that. To, to me, it's that tortured soul that comes out from writers, isn't it? You know, it's that. <laughs> that. And I'm not being critical. I'm just no. telling you my. You know, my observations. Um, but I. Um, I'm. I'm hesitating with this because people might listen to this who I know. But I personally have a hard time with people that tell me they've been writing a book for 10 or 11 or 12 or five years. You, do, I, I get it. I, I, I'm a really big believer in timing and that you're where you're meant to be at the time you're meant to be in the place and all that. But when it comes to things like that, it, it tweaks me. I'm like, Oh no, it, like, what is it? What is it that's holding? And, and now I'm, I'm coaching myself here, aren't I? Cause here I am with <laughs> other books that's in my brain. <laughs> yeah. But like, if you've really got something you want to say, say it. I mean, and, and there's so much now that you can say in public forums or test the water, you know, there's mm -hmm. Facebook, there's Instagram, there's so much, you know, social media and platforms and opportunities, you know, blogs, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be held accountable for this, but that's okay. It's like, you, stop, stop making the excuses. Get you, get yourself out there. You know, get it yeah, out. It goes, it goes back to what you said earlier about just start. Yeah. Just start doing things. I mean, my second book, The Daily Yarns. They, that I wasn't planning on writing that book. I've got, I say it's the second book published, but it's the third book that I've written because I haven't published the second book that I've written yet. But yeah. the, the, the Daily Yarns was a complete surprise and just came from me posting, you know, when the pandemic started, I just started um, writing some short pieces to go on um, social media every day. And the, over a period of time, all of a sudden I'd got a book. I was like, Amazing. Oh, yeah. Where did that Amazing. come from? But, um, yeah. So, and that's what I say to a lot of people. You don't know where the book is, is going to come from. Like you, no. you, you have the idea. And just getting stuff out there, like you said, just Instagram, Facebook, wherever, that in itself could just turn into something, can't it? Yeah, um, and and to you know to give you an example um, of the book that jumps out at me at the moment, you know, um, Jessica Simpson, who's very famous in in the US, um, wrote a, a, a fabulous book, a, a bestseller. It's doing marvelous, and that book originated from journaling. From her yeah. journals, yeah, yeah, like you know, you you don't know, you don't know what the world wants to hear, you know. Yeah. So I'm saying to anybody who's listening, just start. Just start. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, I I think Stella, I could talk to you for ages yet, <laughs> but I try and keep these to about half an hour, so I'm gonna. So Beautiful. Bring it, bring it to a close. I have I have a nine year old out there chomping at the bit, wanting me to take him to Target. So oh, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> time, the time, the timing's perfect. Brilliant. So um, so you you give us some tips to people. So just do you just want to say if anybody wants to find you and find your books, where would they? How would they do that? Sure. So if anybody wants to find me, the quickest place they can find me is at. Um, nannystella.com that's my website mm -hmm. um if they want to find um the books um basically all over the place um amazon would be the quickest one mm -hmm. um and then the third one hasn't i'm not even sure if i'm republishing it as a book or as a workbook mm -hmm. um but everything that i'll be doing will be um updated um from january onwards on nannystella.com oh lovely brilliant well, thank you so much for your time. It's been such a lovely conversation. And You're I, welcome. I love, I, I love that um, like we, we start off and then you just never know where it's going to go with these conversations. And this has definitely been one of them that's just gone in a really lovely way. Like, it's really surprising. Um, but so useful, I think, as well for people listening. It's a, it's a completely different conversation to some of the others, especially with it being the ghostwriting and the collaboration. Um, that's um, been fascinating. So thank you so much. 
Good, I'm glad. And uh, thank you for having me and uh, all the best with your next book. Lovely, thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a great day. Evening. <laughs>